Hey YouTube, Infect is Union here, coming at you guys with my top 10 decks of the format video using um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki because Billy Network is still um, kind of down, like the pictures of the video of the cards don't really load, and I wanted to show you guys a visual because yeah, I'm cool like that. So the top 10 decks of the format, this is my opinion, make sure to comment down below what you guys won't do here, top 10 decks, and yeah. So, number 10 is Karakuris. I feel like Karakuris are number 10 in this format because of their ability to main deck macro, their ability to go freaking triple beret or triple beret or double beret or one beret, or they can go Naturia Beast and you know, they can go lots of crazy first turn plays to stun your opponent and still maintain a great hand advantage. And yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. So, I have Karakuris at number 10. The only problem with them is, of course, that they lose to System Down or side deck but they do go crazy first turn and if you don't have an answer you're gonna have a bad time really and yeah coming in with the number nine spot we have led um six samurais i feel like six samurais are strong because of the same fact that they can go first and stun your opponent crazy have a sheen nataria beast barkion or two of the three out first turn and still have a relatively high hand size or back row count to the fact that they're just going to make sure that you're going to have a bad time and their ability to run the dimensional fissure is really good and um yeah i give them the number nine spot for that factor um yeah they don't really lose they lose when they don't they get out bad because they do open up pretty bad sometimes um especially since some of them only play one elder but um yeah number eight goes to graph uh, but just graph uh, number eight goes to dark worlds um i think that they're the best first turn first dual deck in the meta right now but then they do lose games 2 and 3 because they're hurt by macro and defissure but they are strong and if they can get rid of their defissure and macros they're, they're, they're gonna you know go crazy crazy ham up in this and yeah I still feel like they're very powerful so don't don't get don't take them wrong and yeah the only way to really stop them is by having out that um, defissure macro but they're still a relatively fast deck that can get out this guy all day Number seven, yeah. Number seven goes to windups. Windups are good. They go X Y Z all day. They thought they hurt the deck, but they really well. They hurt the deck, but they didn't destroy the deck like we thought they would. This deck is as strong as ever. Not really. Um, nothing's gonna go back to the magician, please, and matey. But you know what I mean. You know, it's like really good, really X Y Z crazy, and um, this deck is still relatively. It, it's still topping um, Y C S. Is still top fouring many many events. So I give it the number 7 spot. Um, and it's, it has an ability to run Thief Fissure, which is pretty good. Because, you know, when you ex the tactic seed, you don't go banished. Uh, number 6 goes to Prophecies. And this is because this is for April. I'll probably be doing one for May. And these guys will obviously be a, a lot higher than number 6. But right now, it's a number 6 deck. It's not higher than 6. It's not lower than 6, in my opinion. 6 is a pretty good number. And if anything, I'd actually probably switch it with windups at this point, but I th still feel like it's stronger against windups because priest is a prophecy, and then running, you know, your star hall and all that crazy crap, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna, it's a really good deck, and it kind of loses to macro, but not really, because the way you lose is the priest's ability to pop cards, but that's not that bad. And then at number five, I got frog narks really. I think Frognarks look. Frognarks are topping every YCS. Their top eight, uh, last top eight was two Frognarks or top sixteen, and they just have the ability to go into any tribute monster that stops the meta. They have spell Counselor, Caius, End of Anubis, Lad, all that good stuff, and it destroys the meta. So it's a very, very, very strong anti-meta deck. So don't take it seriously. They're really good, but they do lose to the Fissure and Macro Rabbit or Macro Cosmos, um, really hard. Number four, I got ba um, Fire Fists. Um, I think that they're the number four deck of this format so far in April, and they do have a good thing is that they lose to Macro. They can run Defissure, but they lose to Macro because you have to send the Speller Trap cards to the grave when you're using their effects. Um, overall, it's a really strong, fast-paced deck, but I do feel like it's not in the top three. Of that that's going to be at the end of. Um, February, so Fire Fist number four, pretty good explanation. Well, not pretty good explanation, but pretty good deck. That's the deck I'm running currently, and I still love the deck. I love the playstyle, and I love the artwork. So I'm gonna give it number four. I'm not giving it a biased opinion. So triple three, and the number three spot is his um Mermail Atlanteans. But I give the Genex build uh, upper hand here because when Evil Storms come out, 
the mono mermail build is going to be dead. So, just right now, um, Gen X uh, mermails is going to be the number three because the ability to go Undyne and then pitch your marksman and pop their Ophion if they don't have the dress. So, yeah. This, guy, this deck is very powerful, very strong, very swarm like. It does lose to Dimensional Fissure and Macro if they can't get it off the board. So, it, it's going to have a bad, hard time. And even worse is Banisher. Banisher would destroy this card, this deck. Because the only way to get past that would be Atlantean Dragoons and Normal Summon. So, yeah, I do give these guys a number three spot. And, um, yeah, but they're still a very good deck, don't get me wrong. They're topping every event right now. Number two goes to Macro Rabbit, and I give it the number two spot. Um, I would give it the number three spot, but I feel it has a upper end over all the decks that I just named. Um, macro, the ability to main deck triple macro destroys the meta right now. The ability to go Logia, which is a solo judgment set three, and a macro cosmos is devastating. If you open up that good, you're going to have a good time. And there's only one problem with this deck, which is inconsistency is of drawing the extra vanillas. But that can be dealt with if you're a good player, and I've won single-handedly. I've won games with vanillas, and the number one spot goes to Evil Swarms. I feel like this is going to be the best deck of this month, and then when Tacky comes out, it's still going to be comp competing at the top spot. I feel like the ability to go macro, because this deck can run macro, and then have the ability to not let your oppon opponent special summon level five or higher, is ridiculous, straight up ridiculous, and it's going to be a very good, powerful stun deck. And yeah, they go Ophion Turbo in this deck, really. So I feel like that this is the number one deck, and it doesn't really lose to many decks, really. Um, Fire Fist, kind of, but unless they have the Forbidden Dress. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think about your top 10 decks of the format so far in April in the comment section below, or maybe as a video response. Infect the Xenon, signing off. Bye, guys.